Marvel's Spider-Man 2 feels like a refined, more focused adventure when you compare it to the original game and the most recent Miles Morales release. While the first two games acted as a great introduction into Insomniac's superhero universe, Marvel's Spider-Man 2 finally throws the introductions out the window and focuses on character development and relationship building and of course dives into the wonderful lore Venom brings to the table. I think the most exciting part of the game for me was how well it tackles Venom, the lead up to the villain's reveal and how brilliantly it was all delivered. If anything, we haven't seen Venom represented in this sort of scale before outside of the comic book. Sure some may argue with me that the past few movies and games did the character justice, but you have no idea what you're in for here. I was constantly googling names of bosses and even items to reference where they had appeared in the comic book series. Every time I thought the game had exhausted all of its um, venomness, it surprised me with another excellent throwback. There were even moments I didn't expect. Don't get me wrong here, I did have a few issues with the game's pacing at first. For the majority of the game, I didn't see or hear Venom at all. That's because the game's story puts a spotlight on everything else going on in the background, while the symbiote brews for its epic reveal. However, after I completed the game, I think the way Insomniac tackled the appearance of Venom worked in its favour. Too much Venom would have been overkill here, and I can confidently say that what I did see and experience from the character was mind-blowingly good. It felt like it was just enough. That is to say, mostly everything in Marvel Spider-Man 2 follows the same structure as the previous games. The first game felt a bit bloated with its sandbox mechanics. The open world got tiring after a while and the activities never felt like they went anywhere. This time around, Marvel Spider-Man 2 has cut down the number of crimes you can help fight and the various side missions for a more focused approach to storytelling. Each side mission plays into an overarching narrative which is tied to another main character or plot reveal. There's even one side mission that led to a major plot point in the game and basically confirmed a huge event later down the line. This is likely being saved for DLC or perhaps Marvel Spider-Man 3, but it is a rather substantial event in the Spider-Man universe. It is so big that Insomniac Games left it on a cliffhanger to tackle at another point. Marvel Spider-Man 2 is also split equally down the middle. Miles and Peter are both playable most of the time. They both have their own cool side missions to take on and some can be played with either character. It works and feels fluid throughout the campaign. I especially enjoyed how the game's story would progress in the background while I was stuck playing with Miles. I would then return to Peter Parker and it would be a few weeks later in the story. Obviously the time I spent doing Miles' stuff was the filler here. Tombstone has proven challenging. Right, stay ready. Hunt to live. The side missions are also enjoyable and didn't feel like fluff. Instead of mindlessly taking pictures of locations around the now larger than ever New York City, the photo ops contain throwbacks to the story and even some cool easter eggs. Peter's love for science is used to help progress research in mini games around the city and Miles has to unlock secret safe houses locked behind unique puzzles. Again, all these side activities contribute to a checklist of things which then progresses the story. Even if these resulted in a quick cinematic with a few lines of dialogue at the end, I felt as if there were levels beyond what we got in the first game. There are generally some good moments to experience through these side missions. They were also heartwarming. It also helps that these are tied to characters which Insomniac has spent two games developing for us already. Thanks for bringing me here. Peter and Miles are both Spider-Man, Spider-Mans, Spider-Mans, Spider-Mans. And combat feels the same across both characters. They both also have the same gadget loadout. If anything, the general kick, punch, web swing and throws are basically a copy and paste here too. However, where they stand out is in their abilities. Peter has his spider arm attacks, some symbiote stuff and Miles gets electricity. While Miles really does get the short end of the stick here, combat is still fun across both characters. Yeah. 
So while I was kicking, punching, web swinging and throwing baddies around, I was also doubling up these attacks with a chain lightning shot with Miles, a kick up arm attack with Peter and a goo ball every now and then thanks to his symbiote powers. I think so. What? Got an idea. Yeah. I'll work on it while you do the warehouse. Yeah. Raven does not care for this spider. Take him out or he will scare off. The same goes for the gadgets. One uplifts enemies into the air, one can pull everything to a center point, one stuns enemies and one attacks them with the ricochet web. While they acted exactly the same across both characters, performing combos thanks to their abilities is where the game shines. I was often really tired while playing late at night and even then, as I stumbled and pressed the wrong buttons, Miles and Peter would look kick ass and string together some awesome combos. Don't get me wrong, Marvel Spider-Man 2 is tough at times. Distant enemies will shoot you and are just as annoying as ever. Brutes aren't easily beaten either. But thanks to some cool new abilities, it was enjoyable even when I was dying over and over again. The parry system also felt fantastic. It let me parry attacks and follow up with a counter punch and kick. Blades are sharp. You must be new in town. Hi, I'm Spider-Man. In case you didn't know, these guys are bad news. I could also choose to either favor pairing or dodging in the skill tree which gave me a bit of freedom to build a combat style I wanted to use. Sure it isn't an RPG and there's very little room to create your own playstyle but the handful of swappable perks did come in handy. I especially enjoyed the extra air damage buff because I spent most of the time beating up enemies while floating up in the air. It goes a bit further. Both Miles and Peter also have abilities that once unlocked through the story progression can be assigned to buttons. So if you prefer only to use Peter's spider arm attacks you can map those to your buttons. I was a bit disappointed to see how little growth there has been made in the sneaking and silent takedown mechanics. While Miles has the ability to go invisible, the game actually favors going in loud and right into the action instead of sneaking around and swinging from point to point. I could still distract enemies and take them down one by one. There's also one new mechanic that let me make a web line from basically any point. That way I could create an advantage above enemies and not rely on the lamppost. However, even these web lines are limited to the number I had in one area at one time. But even with that, it is pretty clear Marvel Spider-Man 2 is an action game and I barely wasted any time sneaking around. I just jumped into crowds, kicked enemies into the air and violently broke necks and backs. But I never killed anyone, I promise, because Spider-Man doesn't kill. That random guy who I kicked off the skyscraper roof totally survived that fall, I promise. When I wasn't not killing people, I was exploring the city. The map in Marvel Spider-Man 2 is much bigger and getting around feels better than ever. This is mainly thanks to the new web wings which basically let me fly around like a flying superhero. Any one of them, you can choose. But I wasn't actually flying, I was more like gliding. With wind tunnels scattered around the city, I could also glide into one and speed up to the point where I was flying. This helped me cross large areas including the Hudson River and soar way above the water. It really helped me get from one point to the other and it looks and feels unlike anything I have experienced in a game to date. It defies the laws of physics, sure, but it is incredibly fun. Spider-Man can also do the usual web swinging stuff which is used often too, especially in chases. However, there's also freedom here to chase somebody down while gliding, so you do you. Both Peter and Miles also upgrade how fast they swing and the iconic kickoff move is back. It is familiar but it feels great. There is a fast travel system which you can use but I found myself enjoying the parkour. Most of the time, I also didn't have the fast travel unlocked for that specific region, so I just flew there. From a technical point of view, Marvel Spider-Man 2 is a pretty looking game. New York has definitely been upgraded. Everything looks denser, buildings are more detailed and the sheer number of assets across each scene make the city look and feel alive. I would say it almost replicated New York traffic. Almost. To also fly through all of this at incredible speeds and to see everything in such high quality is a real testament to game design. The action set pieces in Marvel Spider-Man 2 are also just pure adrenaline rushes. They are wonderfully set up and scripted and truly capture the essence of what you would expect from a superhero game. Most of the time, it all looks great and sounds incredible. This was also my first game I played with Dolby Atmos thanks to the newly added support on PS5. And there are so many wow moments to showcase this audio tech in this game. 
There are a few visual issues here and there. Ray tracing, while great to have, rears its ugly head every now and then in certain scenes. You're looking to the reflection of a TV or a window and see super low poly characters and assets. They are basically untextured too. It is hard to ignore. It doesn't take away from the game from a performance perspective, but rather just leave this sort of feature out if it's going to look this bad in the game. But I think my biggest takeaway from my time with Marvel Spider-Man 2 is how it has grown from a superhero sandbox game into something so grand. It constantly surprised me, each and every mission was more exciting than the last, and the layers of story to unravel here make the game a love letter to Spider-Man fans. Not to mention the universe that is being built here makes it even more exciting for the future of the series. Whoa. Hey man. New threats? The building's swarming with hunters. Any sign of Connors? So those are my thoughts on Marvel Spider-Man 2. Huge thanks to Sony for sending the code my way to test out. As usual, please do consider liking and subscribing for more future content and visit www.glitch.online for more gaming tech news and reviews. Until next time, farewell. Nothing's working. Oh, that's dirty. Go Pete! You're taking his side? I don't root for cheaters. Ooh, burn!